Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick bite-sized concepts and basic medical sciences for study and rapid review. This video is on carbon dioxide transport in blood. The purpose of respiration is gas exchange. Oxygen enters the capillary from the alveolus, and carbon dioxide leaves the capillary to enter the alveolus and then get breathed out. The oxygen comes from the atmosphere, but where does the carbon dioxide come from? If we backtrack it, carbon dioxide in the pulmonary capillaries is from mixed venous blood that comes from the pulmonary artery, which came off the right heart, receiving blood from all the body tissues. So carbon dioxide is formed during tissue metabolism. The tissues use oxygen and form carbon dioxide. The transport of carbon dioxide from the tissues through systemic circulation and then pulmonary circulation happens in three forms, as dissolved carbon dioxide, a bound form, and a chemically modified form. Dissolved carbon dioxide is around 5%. Carbon dioxide is more soluble than oxygen, so it dissolves more, and that's why it's 5 versus oxygen, which was at just 2%. The bound form is with hemoglobin, as carb amino hemoglobin. This is around 20%. Carbon dioxide binds to hemoglobin at a different site than oxygen, the end terminus of the globin chain. The binding of carbon dioxide to hemoglobin reduces its affinity for oxygen, shifting the oxygen dissociation curve to the right. This is the Bohr effect. The binding of oxygen to hemoglobin lowers the affinity for carbon dioxide. So if less oxygen is bound, that means there's a higher affinity for carbon dioxide. And this is the Haldane effect. So let's see how these work together. The tissue produces carbon dioxide that binds to hemoglobin, reducing the affinity for oxygen and shifting the oxygen dissociation curve to the right so more oxygen is released to the tissues. That was the Bohr effect. Now the removal of oxygen from hemoglobin increases hemoglobin's affinity for carbon dioxide, for the carbon dioxide that the tissues have produced. The most important form in which carbon dioxide gets transported is chemically modified as bicarbonate, around 70%. The carbon dioxide from the tissues diffuses into the capillaries. It binds to water, and by carbonic anhydrase in the RBCs, it forms carbonic acid. That then dissociates into a hydrogen ion and a bicarb ion. Now these reactions are reversible. The bicarbonate leaves the RBC. To maintain ionic balance, a negative ion enters. That's chloride. This is by the anion exchange protein, that's the band 3 protein. And this is the chloride bicarbonate exchange, also called a chloride shift. If the hydrogen ions were to remain as such, it would create an acidic environment. So it gets buffered by hemoglobin. That maintains the pH of the RBC and the blood. Now the bicarbonate is in the plasma, and the hydrogen ions have been buffered by hemoglobin. They travel to the lung and reach the pulmonary capillaries. Here, oxygen is diffusing from the alveolus into the capillary. The oxygenation of hemoglobin promotes dissociation of the hydrogen ions from hemoglobin because hemoglobin wants to take up oxygen. The bicarbonate enters the RBC in exchange for chloride. So now hydrogen ions bind to bicarb ions and by carbonic anhydrase, they form carbonic acid, which then dissociates into carbon dioxide and water, and the carbon dioxide gets breathed out. So the oxygenation of hemoglobin shifts this reaction towards the formation of carbon dioxide for expiration. So the carbon dioxide concentration in blood depends upon how much is produced, that's the tissue metabolism rate, and how much is expired, that's the alveolar ventilation rate. And that is the journey that carbon dioxide takes from the tissues to the lungs. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.